Let's jump Total War here, and today we're going to be doing a Legendary Difficulty 10 turn guide. So first 10 turns for the Western Roman Empire in Total War Attila. And we're not going to do 20 turns because that'll just take a long time. And I feel like 10 turns is all we really need to give you guys a good start with the Western Roman Empire. So the first 10 turns is, makes a big difference. So jumping in into turn 1, we'll get started on the guide. Alright, so on turn one, we gotta lay some, some ground rules down here. First things first, do not panic, okay? This is not doesn't have to be as difficult as what the game says it's going to be, okay? And the second thing we gotta establish is that this guide is not for advanced plays of, of uh, the Western Roman Empire. This is a guide to make the Western Roman Empire as easy as I could possibly make it for you, with a little a few tricks and tips. This campaign does not have to be anywhere near as difficult as it would be if you if you don't do this stuff. So you could, if you're an advanced player, you could hold on to virtually all of your territory. You can fight tooth and nail for it and you'll be okay. But again, this guide is for newer people for legendary difficulty. And this will give you an easy, you know, essentially risk-free approach to get a good start on this campaign. So I'm going to be saying a few things that will seem like utter nonsense, but by the end of the 10 turns, you should see a very solid position that we're in. It's also important to note that in Total War Attila, the number of territories that you own is in, in no way, shape, and form an indication of your power, okay? It is far better to have a few consolidated rich provinces than 60 garbage provinces that you can't possibly maintain. You have to keep in mind that on legendary difficulty, you're going to you're going to sustain a minus eight public order penalty to all of your provinces. That means rebellions are going to happen everywhere, no matter what you do. So, having fewer territories might make things a lot easier. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is go through our military forces. Okay. So this dude here, they they're going to be recalled back to Italy. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do a little bit of... I'm going to force march this dude over to here. Transfer all the troops over to him. Yep, and then just disband him. Then here, we're going to force march into Italy. As fast as possible. This guy here as well. He's going to force march into Italy. And this one here. Force march to Italy, because we are going to abandon a lot of territory. Now, you could, if you are an advanced player, attack the uh, Quadians over here, demolish the settlement, and essentially eliminate them as an enemy. But, for newer players to Legendary Difficulty, I highly don't recommend doing that, because it, it's a difficult fight, and you have to cheese the fuck out of it. And... I basically want you to be able to look at this guide and be like, oh, wow, this actually looks like it's really doable. That's the main point here. Because I get a lot of, like, Saving Your Disaster campaigns sent to me for, of, of the Western Roman Empire. And after this guide, I don't ever want to see a Western Roman Empire Saving Your Disaster campaign sent in to me again. Because with this guide here, you should never have any issue with it ever again. Anyway, this army here... We're going to disband it, because it's going to take too long to get back to Italy. And just checking them all. Okay, this one here, we're going to send him up this way. He's going to go to Palma. And this dude here is going to go to Ajax. Yep, he's going to go to Ajax. Alright, I'm going to recruit our Emperor here. Put him in the province. Commander. We need to make sure that we have one army, at least one army, in every the province that we're going to hold. What we're going to be doing in this particular campaign, I'm going to be holding on to five provinces, and only five. Insulae Occidentalis, Magna Grecia, Italia, Venetia, and Liguria. Every other region is going to be abandoned. So what we're going to do is, in that mindset, in all of these other provinces, we are going to firstly demolish all the buildings. Because what we want to do is strip all the money that we can out of these regions. 
And if you just straight up abandon them, you're not going to get the full amount that it's worth. And what we're doing here is taking the money out of these provinces and putting them into somewhere where it's going to be a little bit more useful. Because another thing you got to consider is that corruption is, is just based on the how many settlements that you have. So every single building is only operating at 45% efficiency at the moment. If we can get rid of most of the corruption by releasing a lot of these settlements, then we're going to increase our efficiency based on the amount of wealth that we build. So every single province that we're not going to keep gets demolished. Okay, so I've just gone through every single region that I don't want to hold on to and demolished pretty much everything. Oh, there's something I missed. But we're not going to abandon them just yet, like I said. Now we need to look at the provinces that we do hold. Uh, let's see. Now, the way I like to design my settlements at the, beginning of the pro at the beginning of the campaign is that we need to maintain the three crucial things to maintain a province. Food, sanitation, and public order maintaining like loads and loads of money at this stage is not that important but in addition to that the latin churches there's two options you can go with the western roman empire campaign you can convert to greco-roman paganism and it's arguably a little bit easier than staying as latin christianity especially when dealing with the huns but in this particular campaign i'm just going to leave it as latin uh catholic whatever but we want to get rid of the churches because the maintenance cost is very expensive and the bonuses it provides are almost minuscule and you can get public order through other means. Generally speaking, the religious differences caused from not having enough of your religion in a given province is, is pretty minor compared to some of the other penalties that you can have. So it's just not really worth having at this stage of the campaign. Certainly would recommend building one eventually once more build slots open up, but right now get rid of it. Now, same thing with re uh, actual rally fields. We don't need these troops, and it's taking up a build slot that we need for something else. Get rid of it. We can keep the guardhouse in some provinces. I don't think I need it in Segusio, so I'm going to get rid of that. Too many churches around the place. It's no wonder they're not making much cash, despite being, you know, the most powerful country in the world supposedly get rid of the rally fields and i'll leave the guardhouse at achelia because this is probably the settlement that's going to get pummeled the most so the latin patriarchal church very good building once you get it down to here but that's a long way off so you can rebuild it later down the track there's also this here the quarry now you can leave this one here if you really want now they do make a lot of money you know, 1650 once it's fully built up but you also need to take it take into consideration what penalties these buildings cause My, uh, minus 10 squalor and public order problems i should I guess i should say plus 10 squalor minus 10 public order problems that requires quite a lot of buildings in order to or developed buildings in order to just get rid of that and you've already got problems just to begin with now if we take a look at fields fields you know at the same tier provide at least some food and if you look at say the uh, the sheep barn it makes 1250 that's excluding any fertility bonuses that you get and more importantly it's only half the number of squalor and public order penalties meaning if you build two of these sheep barns that's the same as building one quarry and it actually adds up being more money that's excluding the food so, I personally, I don't really like the quarries. I much prefer getting the foods. Since food is absolutely crucial, and, you know, climate change is coming in eventually, you really need that stuff sorted. With that done, we've got a little bit of money to spend. 
But before we do anything else, let's go into diplomacy. All right, we want to try and establish any trade agreements we can, if possible. Sometimes you can. Okay, we can over here. That's good. And try and drain them of any cash you can. Good. You have my attention. Sometimes you can trade, sometimes you can't. Just check. You never know. Sometimes it'll say yes. Generally speaking, the barbarians, they're... They're dickheads, they're not going to trade with you. But the Easterners, they tend to be a little bit more reasonable, sometimes. Gods of the afterlife. Spe and then the next thing to do, and this is very much crucial, is to go to the Eastern Roman Empire and the tell them the to never call you again. Okay? <laughs> because that military alliance is one of the single most punishing things about this campaign. Having an alliance with the Eastern Roman Empire does nothing but bring you harm. Cancel it, cancel it right away. Because even though you can drag them into a bunch of wars if people declare war on you, they will never ever send an army to come and help you, and you should never send an army to go and help them. Basically, because of the difficulty of this campaign, it's time to say adios to the East, fuck off and mind your own business. Okay, trade with them, yes. Don't get caught up in all the wars that they're gonna fight. Okay, you gotta worry about yourself. If you really want to hold on to the military alliance, you totally can, but just keep in mind, you're going to suffer for it, okay? Because there will be a lot of people declaring war on them. And the thing is, with diplomacy in this game, once once this number here starts to stack up, once you start getting, seeing a lot of icons in there, it makes you look weak in the eyes of everyone else. So once you've got maybe 10 people at war with you, it's very difficult to get a peace treaty with any of them, even if you've crushed them in battle. So it's important that you maintain some some degree of diplomacy through the campaign and the best way to do that is to kick the eastern roman empire out of the alliance right away they're not going to declare war on you and even if they do they're going to be too busy to, to send anything at you all right now building up our provinces that's the next thing to do uh we want we next turn we are going to have a famine it's going to be a case because we've demolished a lot of food buildings out there don't panic again like i said you'll see a lot of things that just seem absolutely bizarre but you just need to not panic. But we have to start rebuilding the food buildings, but in Italy. This is actually some of your, like, most fertile but least developed provinces in terms of food. So we got to... That's the first thing we're going to do. And we don't have a lot of money, so we make do with what we can. Just, wherever possible, start building fields. Because it's spring, it's relatively cheap. Uh, another thing that we need to do, and it's important that we do this turn one is actually make sure that we hire our agents. We're demolishing a few agent buildings, so we're gonna... We, we don't want to miss out on these guys. So, two priests, and there's a spy building over here, but since I'm not going to demolish that, I'm not going to recruit the spies right now, because we really need to funnel the money into here for the fields right now. Try to just focus on... Just building fields. Don't build anything else right now. Because it's... Don't have a lot of money to work with. Next turn, we'll have shitloads of money. But not this turn. Okay, so we've just built fields. So we've got a little bit of money left over. I'm going to keep that there. Alright, with that, I am going to... Convert this to a fishing jetty. It's okay to have a trade jetty, but we don't really need any military jetties because we are not going to have any fleets at this stage of the game. Now, in terms of technology, I would recommend sorting out the military tech first, all four of these, before you move on to anything else. So, starting with that. Okay, everything looks like it's good to go for the next time. We've spent all of our money. Now, you could also jack up the taxes on this turn. I would probably recommend not doing that. We need to make sure that none of these other settlements revolt for a couple of turns. It's very important, okay, that no rebellions take any of these settlements, okay? It's important that we actually demolish them, and I'll explain why in when we get to it. So leave your taxes on normal. You don't need to get that little bit of extra cash. Just leave it as it is. Let's move on to the next turn. Right, governors. That's important as well. Um, not super important. But let's just, if, since it doesn't cost anything, let's get this guy into 
um, Italia. And just put down the uh, the Bread and Circuses Edict. Alright, cool, let's move on. You fear us! Don't worry about it's it. In your eyes. It's a bit unlucky that they declared war on us on this turn, but just just don't worry about it. Like I said, don't panic. You can try to win this battle if you really want, but it's it's not it's not relevant. They just end up sacking it anyway. War! It's okay. Like I said, don't panic. This is completely normal. Now, this battle here is actually winnable. But again, we're not going to hold on to the settlement, so it doesn't matter. They're probably just going to sack it anyway. Now, if, you, if I had left the army there that started here, it's possible to win this battle. But, like I said, we're just abandoning it. We want this campaign to be easy. That's the whole point of this. I don't want to make this campaign more difficult than it needs to be. So, just don't worry about all this. It doesn't matter. Some people have a lot of pride and think, Oh no, we lose a battle. It means so much. No, it doesn't mean shit, okay? Just, just like I said, don't panic. You'll be fine. Because we have 136,000 gold now, okay? That's going to keep us going for a while. Our income went down, but again, don't worry about it. We haven't abandoned it. We haven't lost any settlements yet, okay? So this is the turn where we we go through and demolish. Because um, I was going to wait another turn, but because these guys here declared war on me and sacked these settlements, there's going to be a revolt here soon. And we need to prevent that, so exempt that from taxation. That should prevent the revolt, because we don't want new factions popping up here. There's only a pitiful amount of gold in any of these settlements left that, that can be taken. Okay, there we go. So, every settlement that I said at the start that we didn't want to hold, on turn two, we're, we're getting rid of them. Now, if any of them get sacked or occupied, they won't be demolished. So, that's why I need to get this done as soon as possible. Now, we need to get these guys into Italy as, as quickly as possible because there's not going to be a revolt this turn, but there will be one next turn. So, we can probably justify jacking up the taxes now to maximum. Because it's not going to make any difference. The rebellions are going to happen no matter what. And it shouldn't happen this turn. It'll happen next turn. Alright, so you need to get down to... Let me just make sure. We can get these guys ready as well. We can buff up our armies with mercenaries if we need to. How can I serve you? Bring me the ledgers. I will look over them. I do enjoy a well kept ledger. I want hourly patrols. So we want to make sure we've got an army ready in every province. Commander, sign up lads for a good and glorious life. Sometimes we might need two armies in a province. Something like uh, um, Intelios and Dendalus needs it because it's kind of difficult province to, uh, to actually defend. But we put them in the minor settlements because if the rebellion shows up in the minor settlements, that'll prevent them from actually getting it. If it shows up at Corallus, the walls there will prevent them from, from being any serious threat straight away. guy here is basically just coming to deliver the army, although that's going to slow down when he, he can't exactly go through the port next turn. But that's okay. Maybe we'll actually send him over to Italy soon, so we're recruiting over here. So, got to get rid of the last of the churches in Italy. Okay, cool. 
And let's start working on food. Okay, so what we want to do is try to make sure that... Okay, most of the food problems are coming from all these other regions. So we shouldn't be having a food problem as of next turn because it's just all going to be abandoned anyway. But what we can do is make sure by going around and not taxing them. It's not going to make any difference to our actually actual income next turn because we're not going to get the taxes. But we can get a rough idea of how much food is actually going to be available in in Italy. They're still, still going to develop them up anyway. Alright, so it's a minus 50 here. I usually like to build cattle first, so do that. That build slot will be needed for a field, but we can't build the field until until this has been developed. So we'll just leave that empty for the time being. We've got loads of money, so we can start fixing up all these other buildings. Um, I like to build an auditorium, a capital, and in the third build slot, build the uh, sanitation building. It's also, we should be able to upgrade these. These will take a while to build, so this will be finished in time before that happens. Maybe just hold off on that one for the, this turn. It's not going to take us long to get the food stuff sorted. Uh, yep, upgrade the guardhouse, get that going. Uh, convert this to fishing jetty. Convert this over to theater. We'll make more money out of it. The public order will be fine. Get rid of all military jetties, switch them over for food. Already got. Try to keep it like one trade jetty in each province and uh, the rest be food. Honestly, we should be fine for food, so I'm gonna go with the vineyard over the, uh, over the other one. Go with the forum first. Okay. So we spent most of our money. But that's okay, like I said, don't panic. These are some serious upgrades that are coming in here. Gonna help us keep control over this. All right. All right. Let's see if we can establish some more governors. Probably uh, insulate Occidentalis would be the best one to put it in, because we really need to make sure. That that province there doesn't revolt very often because it's so difficult to to crush the revolts. Whereas in Italy, it's it's actually quite easily easily sorted. Let's go bread and games or bread and circuses in all of them to try and try and keep it under control. Okay, all good. Uh, how's the politics side of things? Everything seems fine at the moment. Now, one thing that we could do is try to get him to adopt one of these generals, but you have a chance of failing. So, I'm going to go for it. But, like I said, there is a chance of it failing. And if it does back, if it doesn't work, it's going to be a while before you can do it again. But what we want to try and do is get the, uh, the influence into the middle. That's the safest place for it to be. Now, because the settlement will... Either get sacked or occupied, it won't be demolished. Hopefully they actually occupy the settlement this time. Because what we don't want is a rebellion showing up over here and creating a whole new faction. And that will actually prevent it from being raised. Same with that. Tried to demolish it as quick as I could, but they declared war. Sometimes they don't declare war this soon, but... It is what it is. Yeah. 
and the biggest nuke of all time has just planted all over the Western Roman Empire. Okay, so the adoption went through, so that's good. And that's helped us a fair bit in terms of this, because this guy here, we, we got all of his gravitas as well. Alright, everyone get into position, get ready for these revolts that are coming in. Yeah, minus 413 um, public order penalty. But it's all just going to go away in one, like, we'll have the re revolt and then it'll just go back to normal. That's why you do it all in one go. Don't just do it like once every couple of turns. Do it all in one go. Just rip the band-aid off. The small amount of garrisons in all of our settlements should be enough to repel any turn one rebellion. So if they rebel and then attack, you should be able to deal with it. But most of the time, if a rebellion pops up, it will just, it'll try to accumulate a few more troops. Which is why you want to put these guys in positions where no matter where the rebellion shows up, that you can swat them aside straight away. Still got plenty of money coming in. So it's okay to keep recruiting. And then we keep building, because we've got 82,000 to spend, but that's about it. We're not going to really get any more from demolishing. This is... Now we basically play the game, okay? We've made it a hell of a lot easier, because this is another thing you've got to take into consideration, right? These Easterners, right, we no longer share a border with them. They're probably not going to declare war on us now, which they otherwise will have eventually. So that's... What this has done is it might have actually reduced our total number of assets... But it also reduces our our maintenance. We don't need to have 10 armies, 10 small armies on these frontier settlements to desperately hold on to these pitiful, poor settlements. Instead, what we'll have is 5 or 6 full armies to defend 5 rich fucking provinces. That's a much better scenario to be in. And then once you've got these established and built up and you've done a few technologies, if you want... You could then go and recolonize it. But if you're really lucky, the AI will recolonize it, and then you just take it right off them. But it's also very important as well that you didn't spend any growth in any of these settlements. Because the, sort of the way it goes is that the bigger the settlement was when it was demolished, the longer it takes for it to regrow once it ha once it gets uh, recolonized. And yeah, you don't want it to take forever if you're um, recolonizing it. Anyway, let's go through this now and sort out sit stuff. So we want them cattle herds being built. Generally speaking, this is how I plan out my cities. The capitals are sanitation and public order. And the minor settlements are food and food. That's all they do. Just lots and lots of food. And you can make slight variations depending on what you need. So actually in Genoa, because there's marble here, we actually do need that as a resource, especially for building up the capital buildings. So... I'm not going to build the food building here. I'm going to build marble because there was marble over here, but that's been demolished now. So you can get it from, from here instead. All right, now that we've got some money, I'm actually going to recruit those spies. How can I assist you? But I'm still going to leave that there. I mean, we could convert it. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I will convert it main purpose of having that building there at the moment is it's just to get spies other than that to upgrade this to get the food market if we needed the food which we don't really right now you usually worry about that when climate change starts to come into effect which is not going to happen for the first 20 turns so you're good but yeah we want to try and get public order sorted in these provinces before we you know think about expanding so try to take this approach here think of it more like like this rather than holding on to a big but corrupt stupid empire like, start a new campaign of Rome 1. Uh, sorry, Rome, Rome to Total War, Rome 2. Instead of playing Total War Attila, sort of. Sort of. Uh, we could start putting people in as military accounts eventually to get the Master of Soldiers. That's probably the best one to do because if you put one in each of those positions, you reduce your upkeep cost by 9%, which is, you know, it's something. So, generally speaking, I like to put the other patricians into here so that the Dominion improves for us. So yeah, you keep losing these battles, eventually they'll either take it or a rebellion will take it. Whatever the case is, don't worry because it's too far away. I think they liberated, which is... Whatever, it's fine.
So that rebellion will end up taking it. It's okay to happen in Britannia. It's far too far away for them to, to be a concern. It's very unlikely that they're going to send armies this far away down to come and attack us in Italy. But it was very important that we don't have like these rebel factions sitting in, uh, in Gaul. It's a huge buffer zone, a no man's land, where we just don't, we don't need to have a frontier out that way. It's nothing to be concerned about. Now, at this stage in the campaign, we haven't yet won a single battle. But again, I can't stress enough, don't panic. Everything is actually looking pretty good. Yeah, I saw them come up here and... and and occupy that. That's that's a big no. Sorry, we want to get rid of these these uh, civil wars. That's going to take them a few turns to build that. It's winter at the moment. Advance. Money's better than last turn. Come over here. I haven't seen that happen before, where a civil war shows up and starts occupying. That stuff. We knew that there was always going to be a civil war, which is why we wanted to make sure our armies were close by, but I was expecting them to attack us, not, not go and occupy a, that kind of settlement. Alright. Good thing about this as well is some victory is about to come in, so it's good for gaining him some experience. Maybe some mercenaries, if there are any available. Mm, no, nah, doesn't need it, I don't think. Ready for orders. Now, in Total War Attila, you can totally justify auto-resolving the majority of your battles, especially if the odds are in this much in favor. And... Like, that's... I don't think I could have done much better myself manually. You don't have to do it this way. But... Like, like I said, generally speaking, it'll just save you a lot of time if you only fight the battles that would otherwise have been... A, a, uh, a devastating loss. Alright, so this will have another revolt again, but that's okay, because we're leveling up our, our Emperor here. So he got himself an artist. That's fine. That'll actually help with public order. Research rate, that would help, but don't really need it. Probably best to actually gain melee defense for infantry units, eventually making your way down to campaign movement range. That's probably what I'm working on first. Can't turn that off just yet. Right, what I want to do here is hinder the army, but the whole point of this is actually just to gain some experience. Did it succeed? Ah, uh, he failed. Did he seriously just get... Okay, sometimes that happens. I get, I get very unlucky in this game. Don't worry about it. Alright, so... Where did this... So that re... Yeah, the rebellion happened here. Okay, but they're... Came down this way. Right. Okay, I'll have to go down there and chase them. The public order here is much better. Uh, we could drop down the taxes. Let me have a look. No, no, keep it high. And where'd the rebellion over here show? Oh, man, it showed up exactly where we didn't want it to. It's alright. Okay, since this guy here is a family member... It would be better for him to t get the win, rather than just some random dude. Just so we can start getting more influence on our side of the family. So that we can do a bit more political actions. Take the money. Alright, we need to bring him around here. Now, it's, it's pretty much random where these rebellions are going to show up. So, this, from what I was... What I can see here it was actually really unlucky. Because, like, m most of them were civil wars as well. So, once we clear all that out, it'll be good. It shouldn't be too difficult. It would have been really bad if a civil war had popped up over here, because then we would have to come all the way over here to destroy it. It's not that, not that much. 
at the moment, so we should be able to manage. Ready for battle. Commander. Just need to make sure if they capture any settlements that we take them out straight away. We really don't want them gaining any ground. I guess there's another thing with the priest. If you want to maintain religious influence, use the priest. Don't worry too much about religious buildings. Not at this stage. Still got loads of money. Keep building up all of our provinces. Okay, so that cattle herd's been done. The next one we'll do here is, is sheep. Generally speaking as well, if you've got three build slots that are available for food, you don't need to build three. I'd probably go ahead in this other build slot once it's available and actually build the town waterworks because it uses up a little bit of food but it provides sanitation and money. But again, you sort of have to judge what your province needs. Okay, that's all looking good. Just make sure every province is under control. We've still got some sanitation issues, but we're developing the stuff up. Just takes some time. Still got 40,000 to play with. And we just got to get rid of your Britannia Inferior and then just forget about all that stuff. Over here, Illyria showed up, but I wouldn't worry about them too much. They have a beaten up settlement. Let them build it up. Take it off them later on in the campaign. Now the funny thing here, funny thing here is that they might just sack the city, but there's, obviously there's no hope of winning it. Let them have it. Piece of shit settlement anyway. So Illyria has asked for a peace treaty, but here's the thing. You got to be careful with this. These guys have only just emerged as a faction, and technically, if they were a rebellion, that means we technically declared war on them. If you get a peace treaty with someone within ten turns of declaring war on them, you're actually considered unreliable. So. This is good if it would happen in about nine turns, so don't accept this at this point. In nine turns, definitely accept it, but not right now, no. Oh wow, they're being a real nuisance. These civil war bastards. Going out, yeah. Shit. Because if they go and occupy a settlement, it'd be a real pain. Alright. Come over here, get rid of this. Jesus Christ. For God himself. It's such a pain, these these Civil War fucking dudes. It's we such a pain in the battle. ass. Are they building anything here? Yeah. At your command. None will escape. Okay, here's a little trick as well. If you sack a settlement into oblivion, every time you sack a settlement, right? You'll gain a little bit of integrity. See, spoils of war. And so, if I do this enough times, I won't have to decimate them later. It's a bit of an exploit. But... There you go. We gotta hunt down and kill those civil war bastards. And now they don't have a settlement, at least they're going to take attrition. Really good income coming through at the moment. Alright, so public order here. It will revolt again. So we'll get him back over here. And the we, we can upgrade them if we need to, but we, we don't need to right now. Yeah, most of these provinces will revolt again. I really don't want to have to chase after this dude, but we got to get rid of it in order to sort this out. We don't want them gaining a foothold anywhere. If it can be avoided. Ready for orders. Hear us, Lord. All right, that's annoying, but not the end of the world. Uh, I'm not sure what what's going to happen with this guy. At your service. That is impossible. If I had to guess, I'd say he's probably going to try and uh, is there nothing else? and occupy like a ruin out here. So we'll just keep an eye on him. I'll just keep that as it is. We've got plenty of money, so we can recruit another one. 
You. You stay here. If he comes out in the land, we'll, we'll find a way to get him. He's taking attrition. He can't recruit anything else. We'll find a way to get him. But yeah, we're also keeping the taxes up because even though we've got loads of money, we definitely want to save up for when we do want to expand. Are all of our provinces making food now? Yep. Yep, they're all making food. So that really helps with the public order for them. It's totally fine if, if uh, more of them revolt because it's a good opportunity to gain more experience. Right. That technology is nearly finished. Okay, that's looking good. Let's move on. Good, I was hoping they'd do that. So desperate to get another Let settlement. Cower like kennel dogs. They didn't have to pay for a uh, resettlement. Probably because it was their, their only, only, settle, oh, only army. They didn't have any settlements, so I don't think it cost them anything. Hard to say. But anyway, we got them. Who cares? Fodorati Spears, I don't care about them. Um, again, we could sack it into oblivion. We could occupy it, but uh, no. Then we'll bring them back into Italy. We've got loads of money coming in now. Let's now drop the taxes. It's down to about here because there's a 15 public order difference there, and we're not spending that much money each turn. Out. Can fight the battles manually if you want, but in Total War Attila, the order resolve is completely broken. It favors spearmen so much that just, like, why bother? Commander. Ready for battle. All right, public order here is much better. I just don't know what they're doing. I think I think they will go for here, but it's hard to say. Just can't let them get settled anywhere. Alright, do that. That'll help our garrisons out a little bit. I, um, sure, whatever. Loads of food. Probably too much food, but it's, it's fine. Just level these guys up however you want. I don't really care. The only thing I use them for is to uh, maintain public order, so just... It's not important, really. So this province here is looking really good for public order. How may I serve you? I hate to see you disembark. I still think he's going to come over here and occupy this. At which point, we can send them in to go and attack. Don't need to recruit any more troops. We're stable for the time being. I'm not expecting anyone to attack us for a while. We've lost all of all of our other settlements now, finally. And you can see here, like, look how much money is coming through these provinces now. Making more money than we did when we had all of those other regions. And you know what? We've got more troops now. Okay, great theater. We've got the food, so that's fine. Get that going. That's extra 650 wealth from culture. Now, the other thing. Corruption is only at 13%. So we've gone from... 55% corruption down to 13% corruption. That's a significant difference. Okay, and now we've finally reached a point where we've actually spent all of that money that we used from ripping those those other territories out root and stem. We need to get an army over there to prepare for what could be an eventual attack. That is possible. Fact, the Saxons have already been destroyed, okay? So, you know, didn't even need to fight them off at the beginning. Um, yeah, that's fine. Good, character adopted, and looks like the bounce of power seems fine. Commander. Might also be an idea, if, if hordes start coming into your territory, lure them in, and then fucking kill them. Because they're trespassing, and you can't trust them. So what we're going to do here, I'm not going to attack at this turn. We're going to defend our territory here, make sure that they, you know, don't attack. I'll even grab ourselves some garbage out of their forces. But we want to protect the settlements that they can attack, so that's these two here. Make sure they're protected. Okay, yep, they did exact- oh. Fuck. Oh, I moved him out of the way. We for 
Shit. Okay. Um, we need to get over there quickly before they build this up and then they'll start recruiting. Because we've almost sorted out the Civil War. I need to get to Ravenna quickly. Ah, you can't really get there that quickly. Um, public order here is maintaining. Maybe I should have just gone over there and smashed it. The problem is, though, he's standing outside the settlement. How long have we got until that's done? We've got four turns. It's a decent amount of time. And, you know, we've got other, other dudes coming in here as well. Um, we need to get over there quickly, though. Alright, get over to here. And it's not going to revolt for quite some time. And more public orders coming in there, so it's okay. Should actually be okay in the end there. Sanitation could be a problem though. We need that other build slot. It just takes time. Okay, getting some extra growth would really help us out as well. 1% corruption is not going to matter now. But at the same time, we also really need to make sure our integrity is under control. We don't want to be decimating our own forces. Let's keep these guys here a bit longer. Public order is... It's okay. Make sure we've got enough food for that. Yep. Mercenary crossbowmen are really good units, especially in a defensive siege. So I put one in each army just so if, if they attack, we can crush them. Still got plenty of money and, you know, we can tack up, rack up the taxes if we want as well. Where are we getting all this ca cash from? So just from the taxes. We're making 1,700 from trade. Like I said, reinvesting in the, into these provinces makes a big difference. What turn are we on now? Seven. Okay, cool. Really want to try and finish off this rebellion here before the guide. Uh, the, sorry, the civil war. Alright, so he succeeded. Cool. So what we want to do there is get him uh, investigate corruption. That way he can just passively gain experience and also make us a little bit of extra cash passively. Well, more like decrease our upkeep costs. Ready for battle! Okay, we can decimate that one. Ready for orders. And yeah, we should be uh, we should be okay to decimate that this turn. Oh god, they've recruited a fleet. Ready for battle. So I'm gonna need to recruit a fleet as well. Ready for orders. Commander. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Stay with the Yeah, stay with the fleet there. It's fine, just leave it as it is. And it'll make sure we get rid of these guys as quickly as possible. How may I serve you? At your service. Leave this ship. Sabotaging. It's still got a few turns before that's actually developed. Okay, we got vandals coming in as well. This is why we wanted to make sure we left this alone. In fact, if we upgrade it, we can get another Legio. So let's do that. Commander. Now, I know that the Visigoths have two armies. They're no, no major threat at the moment, but these guys here, I'm not sure if that's their only horde. I don't know if it is. Oh, I've got a non-aggression pact with them. Uh, Speak plainly. Game sets you up to fail right at the start with these bloody deals. Just to, just to, um. If I even if I cancel the non-aggression pact with them, they're still going to, um, still going to be ten turns before I can do anything about it. Part. Welcome. The door is open to you, but if you wish to go beyond the courtyard within... No, diplomacy. Just, you can't do much in this. Alright, just keep an eye on them, I suppose. Easy. Um, just raise it. So that's all they've got left. It's it's a fleet. 
they have to come back over here. So we've basically got them. Your orders? Yes. All hands to the so I don't need him anymore. Because there's no way in hell that one would beat us. Ready for orders. It's gained another level up, making our way down to here. Heaven be praised. I go. Orders. Okay. I guess I can keep this one here, on the frontier, so that we can see what's going on. So the Vandals are out here, but if they were to attack... Oh, they've actually occupied this. Hmm. So the Vandals, they're, they're not a friendly faction. Now, if I was to declare war on the... On the Iazages here for their slats against us. Yeah, still gonna have to wait. They they'll declare war on us, and they yeah, no big deal for them. Okay. We've got an opportunity here to wipe out the Vandals, and we should take it. We hunger for battle. But I need to set up, ready to go. No one's coming at us over here. You just stay there. At your command. Some good cheap garbage in there. Ready for battle. Still got plenty of money. Shit, every turn we our income keeps going up despite recruiting more troops. All right, check our provinces. Yeah, probably don't want that to go up any further right now. Food over here is actually a little bit tight, so maybe you just wait. What we could do is switch the trade jetty over to food. That would that would account for, for this, for sure. That'd pay for it. Because we get 650 extra from this, plus extra public order. Whereas that was providing an additional 450, but this is actually going to provide extra food, so... Overall, it's a net gain. But yeah, if I can get a nice big hit on those vandals that's gonna be that's gonna and you know wipe them out that'll save you a lot of trouble down the road especially considering there's not much pressure basically if anyone comes into these these desolate territories you use it as a trap to fucking kill them you don't want any neighbors okay you basically just want to be the biggest prick in the block okay cool they hired a bunch of mercenaries but it's not gonna matter If we had fought that manually, we would have definitely lost some of these ships, but, well, some of these troops. Anyway, that should be the Western Roman Separatists dealt with, so that's going to, again, help with public order. And now he can come back, just leave it desolate. Now, dealing with this, we're in a position now we can do something about it. Ready for orders. You know, these guys being here is actually not so bad, is it? Thanks for the cheap, for crappy troops. Alright. So, Virinum has just been built. Smallish garrison. They got 14 units plus 18 units. Okay. Ready for battle. Do they have any allies? Let's have a look. They do the Allens. Fuck the Allens. The Lord will have me listen to you, but do not pass the day. Okay. So we hunger for battle. We gotta be kinda careful. At your command. Alright, I want this guy here to besiege the settlement. Laying siege to the settlement! Let them cower like kennel dogs. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, no, it's all good. I thought there was a, uh, an Let additional army there. The it's just a garrison. Okay, then we bring these guys up to a barret here, so they come in as reinforcements. Since there's another army just outside there, we need to make sure that we kill them, right? Now, 
What we could do is send these guys to attack this army here. But what's going to happen is it'll make it run away. Movement's a little bit tight. Plus, we do need to get back here to keep an eye on them. In eight turns, you're going to want these guys to die. Um, you know, hire as many of their garbage in the meantime. But if we stand here with all of our forces, auto resolve is just beautiful for us. As long as it's in our favor, just fucking kill them all. And in one battle, we sack. Don't subjugate them because they're not they're not gonna stay true. They everyone's so fucking unreliable in this. So we're doing this to gain integrity, but you know what's coming. And in a single battle, we have destroyed the Vandals. No sacking Rome for them. Alright, then force march these guys back over here. That should go to a governor. Same with that. Alright, so uh, which one needs the most growth? I'd say uh, Liguria probably needs it the most, especially over here. It's, it's a little bit of an imbalanced province. So, he's already got that. There we go. And just like that. Vandals are gone. So he'll just come back next turn and gain replenishment. I don't think these guys are going to attack us just yet. Technology, finish that off. What turn are we up to now? So this is turn 10. And then from here, it's pretty much sorted. It's a, it's a good, strong, solid start. I, I know that it might seem stupid in that we've lost like 75% of our territory. But you got to not think of it at that way, okay? The thing is, we've got at far more than adequate forces to defend our territory. We've got more than adequate income to pay for more forces should we need it. And we've got really good public order, even though we've increased the taxes by a shitload. Like, all of our provinces are now looking really nice and tidy. Just It, it is on legendary difficulty, you know? Um... And we can afford a, a very expensive building every single turn. It's looking solid. So yeah, that's why we only did a 10 turn guide with this. We could go on for another 10 turns, but it's nothing really exciting is going to happen. It's just going to be any time that somebody comes close to these territories, I'm just going to annihilate them. We, you just want to make sure that for the first fucking 40, 60 turns, whatever, anyone comes out this way, you just demolish them, okay? They're not to come near you. Everyone is to leave you alone. Isolationist policy, fuck off, leave me alone. That's the way to play is the Western Roman Empire at this point, uh, in the early stage of the campaign, because you've got to start preparing for the Huns, even at the beginning of the campaign, and having these all built up will make it... They just won't be able to get into your territories. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hopefully... This will be useful for you if you were thinking of taking on the Western Roman Empire on legendary difficulty in Total War Attila. It certainly is a challenging campaign, but if you follow these steps here, it really should take it from a legendary campaign to a probably about normal or hard. You should be able to manage it. I mean, you didn't have to fight any battles manually. Entirely up to you if you even want to. Anyway, that's the end of this one, and I'll see you next time, fuckers.